What is up my dogs lost in here? Beautiful, windy, bit chilly day in South Florida and we're kicking it totally old school. We're bridge fishing with big live shrimp and we're trying to do a catch and cook. I'm hoping to catch snapper, flounder, or sheep's head. Three fish that I would call really just humble fish. And the plan is to catch one or two of them, enough for me and the wife, bring them home and make a super decadent, awesome meal out of just some really humble fish with the help of our sponsor today, Crowd Cow, which we can talk about later. But I am really excited. We're gonna hook up some live shrimp, start pitching on the bridge and see what we can do. What's really cool, this bridge I'm actually fishing under, I grew up a quarter mile away from my whole entire childhood and would come here before school and fish for a snook. And as a teenager, when I learned more about fishing, would take my buddies here with me who didn't really know how to fish and teach them how to. One of my favorite spots ever growing up. If you've watched my videos for a long time, you've probably seen the bridge before. So I'm excited to fish. Rocking it super simple here. We're just doing a knocker rig. Half ounce egg sinker right to a very small circle hook so we have a chance of catching some sheep's head and a live shrimp. Doesn't get much simpler than this to catch fish if you're fishing inshore, I'll tell you that. There's a fish. That feels better, man. Oh, what do we got? Oh my God, it broke me off. No, it just popped off. Damn it. I think it was just a snook. There's a fish. Feels a little better, we'll see though. No, nah, just another little snapper. He's getting better though. I bet he's eight inches. If you're gonna go bridge fish with shrimp, bring lots of bait because the snapper will run through it, man. They will freaking decimate most of your bait. I got like a dozen absolute big dogs in there, which aren't great for sheep said. Uh, but we'll see what happens. Maybe a giant snapper will eat it. Maybe we'll end up catching a snook or maybe a redfish or something like that. We'll end up finding it. But that is a big dog shrimp. Something got my big dog. Oh, big old snapper. Beautiful. That is precisely, precisely what we're looking for. That's a big old dog snapper right there. Awesome. That is an absolute fatty. All right, we just dispatched our fish. Now, if you slip a knife or a point right behind the back of their eye, a couple inches or like an inch, the fish will instantly die. When you're spear fishing, you call it stoning the fish. And that's what we just did, slip the knife in. It's really important that you take care of your fish. That way don't thrash around and ruin the meat. So in the cooler he goes. There we go. That actually might be a better fish. Hard to tell. He's trying so hard to rock me up. That, my friends, may be a keeper mangrove snapper we might have to tape him i bet he's gonna go nine inches he'll be one under well i'll be he's 10 inches perfect absolutely perfect oh that worked out perfect have one shrimp left you go get eaten boom all right we've caught our fish it's time to load up head home get the cleaning and let's get to cooking catch you guys at the house. All right, we have made it back to the house and it's time to start cooking our snapper. Remember, this meal is gonna be about like decadence and absurdity, basically of taking our little bridge snapper and creating it into something insanely beautiful and a really good meal. This is not about health. So get ready to be disappointed if you're looking for that. We got the baby in the other room just going absolutely berserk. So most of this will be done in a voiceover. We have some awesome ingredients that were provided by our sponsor, Crowd Cow. So we are gonna get cooking and make a luxurious meal out of our snapper. Before we get into cooking, I wanna tell you about our sponsor, Crowd Cow. Crowd Cow is a marketplace for high quality meats that creates a connection between the customer and the farmers. So you can know where you're getting your grub from. You can build a box of high quality vacuum sealed meat that is sent to your front door. You can get access to higher quality cuts than you may traditionally find at the supermarket. And every single order is actually carbon neutral, which is pretty awesome. Right now, new members can get 
a hundred dollars of free meat plus free shipping if you sign up and order something with my link below crowdcow.com slash Lawson Lindsay. Make sure you check out the link below and go get a box of meat because you will not be disappointed. And a lot of the ingredients we're going to be using today, we actually got from Crowd Cow. So I'm super excited to get cooking. First things first, we're going to make some mashed potatoes. So we're going to grab out some Yukon Gold. We're going to fill up a large pot with some water. And while we do that, wait for it to boil, we'll peel our potatoes. And then we're going to quarter them to help them boil and cook a little bit quicker. Now, once the potatoes are boiling, we're gonna move over to our shallot. We're gonna finely slice a shallot and then we're gonna crush a few cloves of garlic. Once the garlic and shallots are crushed, we're gonna start cooking some bacon in the skillet. We're gonna let all the fat from this bacon render out and this is gonna be kind of the base of a ton of our flavor in the recipe that we are cooking. Once we set that aside and our potatoes seem ready, we are going to strain the potatoes and then we are going to throw a little bit of olive oil and then add the shallots into the pan that we just cooked the bacon in. We're going to slice our bacon into little bits and then it is time for the secret ingredient, scallops that are provided by Crowd Cow. These are amazing. We're gonna add our potatoes back into the pot and start mashing them. I just cut in a few tablespoons of butter, added a little bit of milk, some salt and pepper, and began to mix and threw the bacon bits back into it, as well as press some garlic. I like to add the milk until it gets to the creamy consistency that I'm looking for, and our scallops are insane. The amount of flavor that's being created in this pan is mind blowing. We got some nice Parmesan cheese that we're gonna cut into the potatoes just to add another layer of flavor to them. Once our scallops are done cooking, we're actually gonna quarter them because we're gonna add them back into our potatoes. We'll then grab a bottle of white wine and deglaze that pan. I mean, the amount of flavor in this pan is gonna be insane. And that's what we're gonna cook our fish in. We're just gonna make a simple egg wash, salt, pepper, and a tiny bit of panko to give it crunch. It's not fried fish, but we want a little bit of crisp to it. We're gonna let our snapper cook in this pan. I mean, the amount of flavor that we've developed in this pan is insane, and that's part of the reason why we're keeping the ingredients on the snapper insanely simple. Not much more is needed when you've built up this much flavor. All right, we have finally finished. We have our snapper fillets sitting on top of a bed of scallop, bacon, rosemary, mashed potatoes with some broccolini on the side and two little scallops to kick. Uh, a very long time went into making this dish and it's now time for Chelsea, my wonderful wife and I, to sit down and eat. It's going for our first bite. I've already tried the mashed potatoes multiple times and they are ridiculously good. Mm -hmm. uh, it's so interesting, this snapper, which I'm kind of surprised by, catching it from like a bridge and a little brackish water river. The snapper is like flavorless. Like there's no fishy taste to it at all, is there? That is an incredible way to make two small keeper snapper go a very long way and make an extremely, extremely satisfying and filling meal. 10 out of 10 would recommend. Well, I appreciate you guys watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you drop a like, make sure you are subscribed. I appreciate you dearly. Until the next video, peace.